Textual Requirements Authoring Using the Use Case Editor In this training module, we'll look at how to effectively use the Use Case Editor. A use case depicts the actor and system interaction within the given context of a goal. These interactions are recorded in different pathways that the user may use the system in to achieve different outcomes. And so a use case narrative outlines a process in textual terms. In this training session, we will cover working with folders, creating use cases, writing its narrative and description, defining primary, alternate, and exception flows, calling existing use cases, inserting tags in line. We will look at how discussion can be done at the use case level, managing files, and generating reports. Here is an example of a use case. This use case is currently being viewed in the read-only mode. If I want to edit it, I simply click on the edit button and now it's been checked out by me and so others cannot check it out right now. They can view it but it's checked out to me and I can work on it. In the use case editor, you can write your textual narrative of a process and as you write your textual narrative, a diagram is automatically created describing the process. When you create the process in your textual narrative, you can insert descriptions at the step level or insert references to work items at the step level and also create work items or link work items against the use case. You will see that in the use case narrative, <coughs> There are a few interesting terms we use. For example, whenever you have a question mark in a step, it puts a condition shape. If you just use the word end in a step, it'll put an end shape. If you call another use case, as in, as in an extension use case, the shape is colored in green. And if you put a dash within a line, the prefix to the dash would become the text of the line and the rest of it would become text of the shape. So these are just a couple of rules. Again, question mark, putting a dash um, are the really two things that you can control there. But then again, it will color code it if you call uh, another use case. Now, as you write your use case, you also have the in the details tab an area where you can put in other information like a description of the use case or the benefits, the assumptions, the frequency. And you can, of course, this is just a table where you can add other fields to it. When the use case is being worked on, you have it checked out. You may choose to periodically save it, but when you're actually done with it, then you should check it in. You may also call upon Smart Report to generate a document based on the use case. In the discussion tab, you can have a discussion here. You can organize your use cases under folders. So if I wanted to create a folder for, say, iteration two, and then I can drag and drop things into it, or as in this case, I'll go create a new use case. I'll call this purchase processing workflow, or rather use case, and that use case is created. So in, in this use case, I'm going to write some narrative now.
And so that's the happy path. Now, under the if true condition, if yes, I'll define an alternate by selecting the the first pathway, if yes, uh, clicking on branch, which would now allow me to define an alternate for it. I'll say if no, show transaction failed message. And so here we'll say if no, show <coughs> So here I'm calling the show credit card screen. And so I will select that text and simply do a loop back to where the user would enter credit card information. So in so doing, I've defined my diagram. Of course, I created the text. The diagram got created for me. Um, so at this point in time, what I might do is I might go to a given step do shift enter to add description and then say uh, e-commerce is key for our website so this is very strategic I want to make a note of that and then I'll just make that bold <clears throat> and again credit card I want to actually insert a work item at the step level so I'll go insert smart tag and in smart tag I can either create a new work item from it or or um, <clears throat> select an existing one since I don't have a existing work item for that so I'll do as a user I can pay using any standard credit card and in so doing I've created a new work item that's linked at the step level. Now you could have done this where you could have selected an existing uh, work item for the insert tag as well. When you hover over this, you will see that there's a, there's a couple of buttons once you just to see a little bit more information, or you can click on edit, and this will open up the work item detail window. Now you may also create work items against the whole of use case or link existing work items to it. So if I wanted to do that, I would go here and I would say, um, let's look for something here. Say I'm going to find the login use case. And link it to the use case as a whole. You will see in the toolbar you have a few options. This is for the merge that we've used. Um, this is for, sorry, this is for the branch. This is for the merge we did. And similarly, at any point in time, if we had a process for uh, shopping cart, then we can simply call another use case and refer to another use case from here. And this is a smart tag we, can, we, we have used. There's formatting available here. And you can also, as we did earlier, call Smart Report to generate a document for us. So at this point in time, I may just simply go and check it in so that others may work on it. So essentially, the idea of a use case editor is that it allows you to define these use cases, have the diagrams auto-generated, and then link your requirements or elicit requirements based on use case in the use case editor. There's more information available within help, uh, but hopefully you'll find this interface to be quite intuitive as you play around with it and get used to it. Hopefully you'll enjoy working with the use case editor. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.